You are listening to WP Radio's Out and About podcast, brought to you by Genesis Rehabilitation, Physiotherapy, and Sports Injury Clinic. All right, on today's episode of Out and About, we have uh, Phil Langley from MyKey. Uh, just to let everyone know, this is a recording that we did again uh, live at the OIAA Claims Conference on January 22nd. Phil uh, Langley is an excellent guy. He wasn't originally set to be on the show. He reached out to us. He loves the promotion that he gets from the OIAA. It works really great for MyKey. MyKey is a really cool company as well and uh, Phil is always great to have on the show because he brings us something new and interesting Uh, this year he brought us some Texas beef jerky he brought us some pralines from Texas and he brought us some hot sauce as well so I mean uh, Phil is amazing not that we you know don't mind the gifts but just having Phil on the show he uh, talks about Airbnb and all the changes that are coming around to uh, my key great episode so sit back relax enjoy the episode and you can really tell Phil is passionate about my key and everything he does and uh, just listen to Phil's story as well because he's actually going through a claim right now uh, as well so he's actually living the my key experience so again sit back relax enjoy my key and enjoy Phil and this episode we're live Sarah Doherty WP radio we're live I've got Phil Langley executive director of my key international Phil Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Terry. Thank you so much. You know, really, a uh, uh, shout out to you and Kieran. You guys do such great work. Really appreciate it. Well, it's a pleasure having you on. I mean, uh, it was great meeting you last year. I love the little things you give us. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, local stuff, it's great. Phil, um, we're here this year, and we're going to talk about alternative housing with you, uh, the Airbnbs, that kind of stuff. Just kind of give me the rundown. What are you guys doing? What are you up to? Yeah, so at my key uh, insurance housing, we're actually Canada's largest provider of temporary housing for insurance claims totally dedicated to that and what we found over the last year it's the fastest growing category it's alternative accommodations that are really exploding when i say alternative it's not hotel not furnished corporate housing it's literally the airbnbs the kijiji kijijis the private rentals and they're wonderful options for an insurance claim but for an insurance carrier there's some unique pitfalls that we have to overcome to make sure that they're you know, unique to an insurance claim. So are you working with Airbnb? We How actually are you doing that? do. Um, it's a good question. So it's not a, Airbnb doesn't have formalized partnerships, as best we know for this category, but we do have a corporate account. Uh, our associates will actually contact the host, will negotiate rates, will verify safety, ex- um, everything that goes with the rental. Because if you think about uh, an Airbnb, uh, for example, I stayed in one, I secret shop, I stayed in one last night. So okay. when, I, when I checked in, 300 Front Street, it was interesting. It was real convenient. The guy said, hey, just show up. The door's unlocked. The key's on the kitchen table. So for an individual traveler, that's not such a bad experience, right? But for an insurance claim and a family, the security's not there. So what we do is we actually vet all the properties. We make sure that the person renting it is, in fact, the owner. Uh, we make sure that it's safe. And like I said, there's an example of potential safety. Do they have key, uh, key lock protocols, et cetera? Um, and then we do the negotiations. We do the contract work. We front the payment. So here's the other unique thing, Airbnb. If you and I were to travel, Terry, we go someplace for three days, you have to front four or $500. Most people could probably handle that, right? But if you're going to stay for three or four months in an Airbnb or a Kijiji, you have to front the entire three or four months right away. So having $15,000, $20,000 available isn't all that easy. So we front that on behalf of the insurance clients. Their policyholders don't have to front that money and then seek reimbursement. For so the you carrier. take care of the LAOE Everything. setup? Now, what about groceries and that kind of stuff? Do you guys uh, make any accommodations for that? So could they send you a grocery list, do that kind of stuff? Is that something that would be maybe a possibility down the road? Yeah, it is. Today, that's what we call a concierge service. And so it happens on a limited basis. Uh, But we're looking to expand that now with the use of technology and apps. People can pre-order what they want to have there, whether it's unique to their diet or their ethnicity. So that's that's a growing category. Our, Our insurance clients are asking, how can they make an impact upon the stay? Because what we say with temporary housing is, you know, the customer service is a big deal, right, in the industry today? Absolutely. With temporary housing, it's a daily reminder of how well or maybe how not well you're being treated by your carrier because you're living there every day. So we're constantly working on services with our clients to make it a unique and personable experience. I love that concierge service idea. I think that's great. I mean, there's a hotel chain that I deal with. Um, I won't say their name, Marriott, but uh, (laughs) they're fantastic. I mean, there's a program, the residence in. Um, and they allow you to send your kind of your grocery list in advance. So I'd send it. So when I arrive at the hotel, everything that I need is there for the week when I'm going to be there. 
Yeah, absolutely. So there's a real convergence between a retail transaction now and insurance. So with more and more apps, websites, you know, as, as individual travelers, we're very astute at using an app or going on a website. But for an insurance claim, which average duration is a couple months, the logistics are a lot different. And so there's sometimes a retail expectation for concierge services, but you have to do the blocking and tackling to make sure that the property is safe, secure, proper to live for months, not a couple of nights. Yeah, and the other interesting thing about uh, what you're doing, it does that include uh, possibilities of having pets and your family pets join you at this at these Airbnb properties? Oh, absolutely. And again, it's not just limited to Airbnb. There's VRBO, there's Kijiji, there's a lot of private rentals now. Even companies like Expedia and Booking are doing private rentals. But yeah, uh, we, we experience about uh, almost 70% of the time, Terry, uh, families will have pets. Yeah. And so we have to work with the property owner to make sure that there's a security deposit, make sure it's uh, okay for the, uh, for the host to allow that. Sometimes it's not, but at least we can vet that out and make sure that the family can move in safe, sound, secure. Yeah, and I mean, we're, we're talking about people that have gone through a traumatic issue, right? It's, you know, the roof's blown off, they've had a fire, they've had a flood. I mean, the, the more convenient you can make it and the less stressful, I mean, that's great. I, love, I just love talking to you about the, the options that you have for insurers. Well, I can tell you, I, um, I actually walk a mile in my own shoes. So this last spring, my house burned down. So I was at wow. home and with my pets, my family was away, my house burned down in literally five minutes, it was unlivable. So I went through the entire experience of what it's like to be standing in your shorts and a t-shirt with your dogs in the backyard, found the cat, put it in the car, and now I need to find a place to live. And look, I'm in the business, and it's still a traumatic experience. You're trying to find something the next day that'll handle three children, two dogs, a cat, close to work, you know, uh, so, you know, I didn't do it as an experiment, <laughs> unfortunately, but yeah, yeah. I do have a new appreciation uh, for what policyholders go to. Look, it's a traumatic event. Oh, know? it's uh, horrifying, and I n hope to never suffer it, yeah. but, I mean, I've been and dealt with these claims, and, you know, you're talking to people that are just literally on the edge. Yeah, so really, the, the, the first step we take in almost all instances is let's get them into something safe and secure for the night. Even most long-term bookings, whether it's alternative accommodations or corporate housing, we put them in a hotel for a night or two, let them calm themselves down, gather their wits, make sure that we get the property properly vetted, everything's ready to go, and so they can move in. Because the last thing you want to do after your house just burned down or your house flooded is deal with an unclean, unsecure property just because you're in a rush. So we take that pain out of the process. So y you're really a two-step process then, this new way of doing things with the, the alternative living. You can do a two-step process. Um, hotel for a few nights and then get them into an accommodation, hopefully within their area, their school district, whatever it is, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we like to sort of joke in the industry, everybody lives in the best house in the best neighborhood, right? The reality is most of us don't. But with the uh, access to now alternative accommodations, it gives more local properties in more neighborhoods than you would with traditional hotels or corporate housing. Well, is it cheaper? You know, that's a great question. I think most times it's less expensive. So I don't say cheaper because yeah, no, no. Yeah. sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's not just the price of the unit, it's the overall ALE spend. So when we get somebody into a house with a kitchen and bedrooms and parking and garage, all those additional expenses go away. There's not the food cost. And for our carrier clients, who are really our clients, their policyholders are our guests, we significantly reduce the cost for them because now you don't have the policyholder calling every week looking for a check, looking to get reimbursed, need their money to get for food, for parking, whatever it happens to be. So to answer your question, yeah, it actually is less expensive. This last year throughout the Canadian market, we're forecast for our clients we save about 17% on average versus a retail transaction. That's pretty good because not only does it help the carrier, but it helps their policyholder extend their ALE limit. So they get more for their limit. I was just about to ask you how much the percentage was, but you gave it to me. 17%, that's a massive amount of money because I'm sure you're doing a massive amount of transactions. Yeah, and the other area that we really help our carrier clients with is managing the stay, working on the notice to vacate. The, I call it the Friday effect. A lot of times somebody will be there on a Friday, and if they need an extension, if you can't reach an adjuster, well, now they're there until Monday. We actually proactively work on that, that if we say, hey, Terry, if you're going to be out on Friday, we make sure that you have the move out instructions and you are out, which reduces the overall cost of the claim. Yeah, I mean, um, and are you negotiating... Um, 
longer stage, um, less expensive price. So if you're going to be there for four months with the Airbnb person, is that's negotiable and all those things? I'm sure you're working on that as well. Yeah, it is. It's a great question. And it's not that simple to have communications through some of these online mediums. Like you can't pick up the phone and call an Airbnb host. You have to use their secure site to, oh, really? to go back and forth. And so to have that conversation... You have to work with the host. You have to work with the property owner and say, look, I have a booking that's going to last, say, three or four months. And can we negotiate a better price? Because, you know, on average, I don't know what the exact numbers, but the typical Airbnb property, they're renting two or three nights at a time, not for two or three months. So it's valuable to them, but we need to have that conversation virtually to take care of that. And we don't want the policyholder to do that because they got other things that they're working on. And... Uh is as part of this concierge service, is there like cleanup, or I mean, it, are we looking at full houses that have their own laundry so they become very self-sufficient very quickly? Yeah, we can arrange that. So most properties don't have like an in-house cleaning service, but we can arrange to have cleaning come in if that's approved by the adjuster. Um, we actually have a unique service up front to vet the property too. So we look at reviews to make sure the properties are, are secure. They they have. Um, uh, quality standards there. But if you're still not comfortable as an adjuster or, or a, f a policyholder, we can dispatch. We work here closely with Crawford and Company. They have a division called We Go Look. And We Go Look can actually go out and vet the property within 24, 48 hours to make sure that it does have smoke alarms. It is handicap accessible if it says it is. It has secure locks. So we can put eyes on a property, not just a website. Wow, okay. So f feet on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Within 24 to 48 hours. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and you said it's Airbnb, it's Kijiji, it's RO, VRBO. VRBO. Yeah, there's so yeah. many new uh, uh, modes of that today. And, there's and even private rentals. And are you guys scouring the net for those properties, or how does that work? Or are you just looking at the time? No, it's a, it's a good question. So we do it two ways. We have uh, embedded inventory links. Not to get too technical, we have APIs with some of these companies so sure. we can see inventory. But in many cases, because you know what, you just don't know where an insurance claim is going to happen, and a lot of times they happen in residential neighborhoods, obviously, uh, we'll have to initiate a search. So we, we contact policyholders within one hour, notification from a carrier, and uh, today we have about a 95% booking rate within 24 hours into a secure property. So into a hotel night one, and then hopefully into a secure property to get that that total cost down. Yep, absolutely. The cost of uh, a hotel is, in general, about 30% more per night, you know, depending on markets, and then you have to add in food and parking. So it really helps everybody to get somebody into a long-term accommodation. Plus, you know what? You and I have spent probably many nights in a hotel. It's nice for a night or two, but after a while, those walls start closing in. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is you can feel like you're at home again, Yeah. even though you're not. It may not be your home, but the fact that you can go down into a different room, it's multi-levels, you know, there's not five of you in one or two bedroom mm -hmm. uh, hotel room must make a huge difference for these people. Yeah, it does. And you know what we're most excited about this year is we actually implemented a process uh, for net promoter score. So we implemented a net promoter score process, and uh, our year-to-date net promoter score is now 68 which is almost double the insurance industry average for satisfaction. Again, our customer is the insurance carrier. The policyholder is our guest. And yeah, so, I like the how you say that. That's, you know. that's good. WP Radio's Out and About podcast is brought to you by Genesis Rehabilitation Physiotherapy and Sports Injury Clinic. With two convenient locations in the GTA, Genesis strives to provide the best physiotherapy and massage for their patients, along with the ability for treatment of spinal decompression. For more information, please visit genesisclinic.ca. Um, so, is is that the way you see the industry going? Is with the alternative accommodations, or are we still looking at, you know, your general brick and mortar hotels, or, or, you know, what do you think? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. And if I had all the answers, you know what? I, somebody called me a genius, but I can just look at trends, right? And today the trend is that policyholders want to be in a property that's more like home. And so with, with alternative accommodations, we have that uh, probability of putting them in something that's a little bit more viable. Look, hotels are always going to serve their purpose for that immediate night or two. But the, the concept of staying in a hotel for a month or two months or three months is really just antiquated. It's expensive. It's not customer friendly. And it, there's just a better way as, as we go about this. Yeah. Um, let's let's kind of just take it back to... You know, let's for those people that haven't heard, where did my key develop? Where did it come from? What you know, what's your background? How does it all come together? So uh, I've been in the insurance industry almost 27 years now, right? I started out on auto and then migrated to property, and a, uh, a handful of us got together when we were working with a housing company, and we said there's got to be a better way to treat the policyholders and the carriers 
when they have a temporary housing need, right? There's been other companies, uh, particularly in the US, that have been in this space, but they're more like booking engines to get a hotel. And we thought the customization piece of this, truly the ability to treat somebody in a humane, safe and secure fashion was something that we strove for. So I, you know, I'm not gonna lie, there's still some heavy lifting to it, but that heavy lifting pays off. I mean, I can't tell you how many emails and calls we get from policyholders saying, gosh, you know what, that was a horrible experience I had with my claim. Not, not the claim handling, but the event. But you know what, you made it better for me and my family by helping me find the housing, helping me get my life somewhat back to normal for that period of time. And do you coordinate the actual um, movement of their personal effects or goods, or or is that still left to the contractor? How does that is that coordinated yeah. somehow? Yeah, we can coordinate that. Uh, candidly, generally that that doesn't happen very often because if it's a fire or flood, that that furniture is also damaged and their personal property is damaged. But if it's put into storage or they want to move it to a single family home, we can coordinate with the contractor and, and go ahead and take care of those services for them. So I've got to assume then, just based on that, we're looking at fully furnished properties when you're doing Airbnb and those. Uh, my stays. Yeah, generally, I'd say the vast majority of those are fully furnished, but we don't rule out uh, looking for a uh, an available home and furnishing it. You know, many times if somebody has a complete fire like I did, you're going to be out of your home for seven to twelve months. Oh yeah. We'll actually go to realtors and say, look, you have a house on the market. How would you like to lease it for the next nine months? And then we'll furnish it for the policyholder. That happens, you know, routinely. Uh, because those are really long durations. And the family, you know, they have multiple children, they have pets, you know, they want to be what they were living in or as close to as possible. And, and how do we deal with the issues of, and when I say we, I mean just in general, with the pet, you know, um, spoiling the carpet and that kind of stuff. Is that, you, you've got to take that into account, I'm sure, too, right? As sure, the, we do, we do. And, you know, there's, uh, there's pet deposits, there's pet fees, et cetera. But I have to tell you, you know what, over the course of the years, and we've been doing this well over a decade now, it happens so very little. You would think it happens a lot. I would think it does. But it really doesn't. <laughs> you know, it really, I, I think a lot of times if, if you treat people uh, professionally, they treat the property as if it's their own, right? And, and uh, we have found that. So I have to say in defense of a lot of policyholders, they generally take pretty good care of the properties we put them into. Well, that's fantastic. I'm glad, to, you know what, I'm very glad to hear that. Um, I, I had one claim way back in the day where that wasn't the case, so that's why I asked. So yeah. for me, it's a personal thing. Um, but for the most part, I'm you know when we put people up in accommodations, um, it's it's long term. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah, and I really didn't have the concept of this. For all the years we've been doing it, I didn't have the full concept until I had my loss. And then I really realized, you know what? I don't want to spend all this time looking for housing. I don't want to deal with I don't want to deal with the paperwork, all that. I had so many other things on my mind. What's well, a good and thing you knew what to do? I, you know, I did. And but <laughs> so now we actually use that as yet another example of how to treat policy is that hey, walk a mile in your shoes. I mean, I laugh, but literally did. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and I mean, I think it would be easier if people I mean, a lot take that stress away. People can go back, even if they're close to their neighborhood or just even in the area, um, so their kids don't, you know, feel isolated and those kind of things. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, traumatic issue, right? A really traumatic time. Yeah, for sure. The other thing we do too is it's a uh, particularly here, like in the GTA, uh, empty nesters. Uh, those people who don't have children, they experience a loss. They may be living, you know, in the suburbs or on the periphery of the city. We say, hey, where do you work? And we find them something close to work. And you know what? Now they actually have a convenient location that they can live in for the next three or four months without their commute while their property is getting ready. And so they, that's just applying some of our local expertise to something that we can, uh, we can uh, go ahead and present to them. And how do people reach you when they want to get, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have uh, affiliations with insurers and stuff already, but how do people reach you? So adjusters just, you know, straight off the bat, how do they get in touch yes. with you? Yeah, that's a good question. So uh, um, almost all of our adjuster clients uh, can access us through a portal, through email, or through phone. Um, most of our transactions with their policyholders are generated after we get the claim. And then we now text and email more than anything. You know, we, we have a new toll-free number, which is 844-627-8759. But to be honest with you, we don't use it that much. We use email. <laughs> People email constantly. Is there a standard email, like an info at MyKey? It's or? real simple. It's insurance at MyKey.com. So MyKey is M-Y-K-E-Y dot -E com. So just insurance at MyKey.com. Yeah. They can get in touch with you. What's your turnaround from when they send an email? Do you have a 24-hour staffed? Oh, yeah. I mean, because fires happen at all times, right, yep. and floods. Yep, sure thing. We're staffed 24-7, 365. We have service level agreements with our clients that will be in contact within two hours. Right now, we average about 22 minutes wow. by the time we get a claim. That's so fantastic. It's, it's all about customer service, as you know, Terry. I think it's one of the items on the agenda here 
uh, to talk about the, the claim experience, and we really strive to make sure our clients are supporting their policyholders. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for being on. Oh, Is there great. anything I forgot to ask you that's important? Oh, my gosh. No, but you know what? I forgot to just acknowledge it. Your breadth and depth of the industry is fantastic. I mean, you're like the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> I, I mean, you know uh, everything, thanks. and I really appreciate it. No, no, time. no. I appreciate it. I did see that you said 100... Hundreds of policyholders are assisted nightly by your company. And you're in Canada and in the U.S., right? Yeah, we're in Canada and the U.S. Um, we are a Canada-based company. We're located actually in Saskatoon. I was out there last week, and man, was it cold. Yeah, uh, yeah. 38 below. But uh, yeah, literally in Canada. I checked before I, I came here this morning, and we have over 200 families and individuals in housing across Canada as a result of claims. Wow, that's incredible. And I, I guess cats must be big for you guys, right? Yeah, so, you know, uh, the last major cat we really had was Fort McMurray, and I spent weeks up there. Um, you know, there hasn't, knock on wood, there hasn't been a substantial cat uh, in the marketplace, um, but, you know, we're prepared and ready when those happen. You know, it's, um, well, the recent tornadoes, I'd say, I'd say last fall, the tornadoes in, in Ontario, Ottawa and yeah, stuff. In Ottawa area, uh, we had a lot of claims, and they were all after hours. Yeah. But we're staffed and ready for it. We know. And we've had some really nasty weather events this year. It's, I mean, it seems to be getting worse and more frequent. Yeah. Yeah, climate change doesn't exist, sure. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, that's another topic. But it's just, it, it, for me, I mean, the fact that you guys are out there and you exist and people can find out more about you, um, that's wonderful for me. And wonderful. it should be great for the people listening to the podcast. So really write this down, guys. It's insurance at mykey.com. Quick turnaround, accommodations, reducing your ALE, reducing your over ALE, and just customer satisfaction. That MPS score of 68 is huge. Yeah, we're really proud of that. You know, I last bet you should be. The last message I'd like to leave for our adjuster clients is that you have a tough job, and we want to help you adjust claims, not administer. We'll take the administrative piece of temporary housing away and let you adjust. You're an adjusting professional. That's what we hope you do, and we'll take the administrative off your, take, off well, your desk. Thanks for being on, and as things change again, please let us know. Absolutely. And please come back on the podcast, and I always look forward to speaking with you, and uh, I'm sorry to hear about your loss, and uh, keep me updated on that because we can talk about Certainly it and will. how the things went. <laughs> thanks, Terry. I really appreciate it. Thanks to you and Karen. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, thanks again uh, for listening to this podcast. We really enjoyed having Phil on. He's amazing. Uh, and next week, we've got the chapter check-in. So sit back, enjoy that. Hopefully, you'll check in for that as well. And uh, guys, remember, it's as easy as uh, Rob Petrie made it. Just call in, send an email to uh, Kieran, Kieran at Doherty664.com. Uh, just reach out to Kieran. Uh, we've got tickets for sporting events, guys. Really easy. Great questions. Just listen to the podcast. Give us a shout out. And, uh, and Kieran will reach out to you and we'll hook you up with some tickets. All right. Thanks again, Phil. And thanks again for listening, folks.